welcome back to another Bible study Friday for Brother G and Brother Jave. Today we will be doing John chapter 5. We're going to be doing half of it and then the other half next week. To start off, we're going to do a prayer by me and the end of prayer is going to be by Brother Gio. And then we're going to get straight right into the word for today. Everybody just bow your head, close your eyes. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for this day that you have made. I rejoice and begin it, God. We pray as now as we come together as brothers to be able to discuss your word, God. We pray that you'll be able to speak to us through this word, God. We pray that there will be able to have a good message that we'll be able to learn and just keep on growing, God. We pray that we'll be able to teach each other stuff and point out key information in the scripture, God. We pray that we keep on doing this to get a higher level and a better understanding of your word, God. Continue to grow and build each other up, God. Jesus name, amen. amen. Get right to it. All right, so John chapter five. So verse uh chapter four we ended with um Jesus um going back to the place where he turned water into wine. Um and he heals a person's son, a man's son just by speaking it All right. in turn when that man went back to the house to see if the man, if his son was in fact healed, he found out that Jesus healed him and the whole household was saved and they believed in Jesus. Yeah. I'm the number of chapter five rather. It says after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. There is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at the certain season, at a certain season into the pool, and troubled the water. Whosoever then first among the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been, had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Wait, what is an infirmity? So I was thinking as I'm reading, I'm like, do I need to like break it down now or should I break down after the story is finished? Um, but yeah, since you asked, let's break it down now. So, Jay, you remember what happened at this pool? I mean, it says in verse four, but I'm wondering if it's like this took place in the Old Testament. It says, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. What's the word? Uh, first that, half. Yeah, you, you know what that was? The troubling of the water? Well, yeah, I know what the troubling is, but the explain the troubling for the people, I guess. But I'm trying to think about when this took place. Like, if this is like an Old Testament event or if this happened now. As far as a Old Testament, and I'm not sure, um, but essentially uh, the angel went down and stirred up the water per se and whoever went into the water at that specific time um if they had an infirmity which is pretty much a sickness right some sort of sickness in their body um they went into that water they were healed basically and simply put mm -hmm. yeah i wonder what bethesda means in hebrew uh house of flowing Gotcha. Actually, that that's that's Greek. I'm sorry. Greek is house of flowing. House of flowing. Yeah. So maybe the word, like it says, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Okay, so that is the Hebrew word, but then in Greek, it's house of flowing. House, yeah. Which makes sense. Um. All right, so I'll try to make a plan for you. E, as let's say you have, you know, like people have those wishing wells. They take a coin and throw it in the water and hope something is going to happen make a wish. Yeah. Uh, instead of a wishing well happening, these people actually want to throw themselves in that water and, and come out better. So like basically like a form of like baptism? Like, 
Um, no, yeah. no. Not fully, but like in a way, not like if yeah, like, yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, you probably don't want to mix baptism. But I get what yeah, you're yeah. You body into it. I get how you're trying to relate it, but not not quite. This was this was healing waters. Right, it was a healing sanctuary. That yeah. is like what it was. That's it. Um, you know, like how people be on TV trying to sell oil come that come from Israel. Mm-hmm. I bless the oil. This oil will make you whole. That type of stuff. <laughs> so, um, so this man was pretty much he had this sickness, and did they spell out the sickness. It says a certain man was there thirty eight years. Oh yeah, he was laying on the ground. He was sick. And Jesus walks by and he asks you, will you be made whole? If I was this man and Jesus walked up to me and asked me, will I be made whole? I'm probably going to look at him like I'm like, he's crazy. I'm 38. Do it look like I do not want, like, do it like I'm not trying to be made whole? Like, I've been here this whole time. This is my life. It's all I know. I've been sick for this long. Yeah. Of course I'll be made whole, but we all know how Jesus approaches people, right? He goes right to the root. Of the problem so it's not it's not a fact of him making himself whole you'll see as the conversation progress what jesus is talking about when he asks like what, what why is he hitting him with that question off the bat to start right. the conversation so we'll, we'll keep going right it says verse seven the impotent man answered him See, even impotent, I wouldn't even. I don't know why. They, what does anybody have another translation? Because impotent to me doesn't mean what I think they're trying to say. Like I guess impotency is like sickness. Like you can't. I think it's you can't reproduce. I it's it's helpless or powerless. It's that too. I remember preaching, and um, somebody came to me after church, and she was like, "You know, the Bible didn't say he was impotent. I said it had nothing to do with." Um, his sexual uh, state for him being able to reproduce. It also means um, just ineffective, helpless, or powerless. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, I got you. Yeah. So the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step is down before me. So, do you understand his response to Jesus? But I was too busy trying to jot notes down. Oh, I'm on for, I'm on for. No, so, so, so the impotent man, right? The, 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 the lame, the powerless, the helpless man. He says to him, "Sir." Notice how he addresses him. He calls him "sir." Right? Yeah. I don't think he knows what he's talking to. Again, another right. encounter. All right. Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. So for years, this pool has, has been the place of healing, right? And, 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 and word has been passed down from generation to generation that an angel came, stirred up the waters and, and put like a, a healing on, on, like a healing on the water itself, right? And so he's saying he's so sick, he's so ill, ill, he's so helpless that he can't even get up on his own. He needs somebody to do it, but there's nobody around to help him get up and go into the water when the water is troubled, when the water begins to be uh, another place of healing, another center of blessing. And he says... But while I, was, while, while I am coming, another step is down before me. And Jesus said unto him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. 38 years, this man's been sick. Jesus finds him in a state where he can't get up on his own. There's nothing he can do to help himself, and there's no one around him to help him. But he's, 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 like, he's finding him, he's positioning himself where the healing is, where the miracles begin, where the water is. So 
it's, it's funny, right? We, we look at water as a source uh, internally, like to drink and, and so forth and so on. We can't live without drinking water, right? But in this case, the water is being described differently. This water is, has healing power. Uh-huh. So this man positions himself for healing. So I, I like to think of this like a certain posture that you should take to position yourself to receive what God has for you. And I don't think that, like, again, because he, how he, how he answered Jesus, how he addressed him rather, he said, sir, I have no man. Like, I, I don't think that he was putting two and two together. As, for him, I think he was just trying to position himself to get healed. He just wanted to be better. Yeah. But I think that Jesus wanted something more for him. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of people laying around that pool sick probably i gotta imagine maybe the woman with the issue of blood might even circled around this place a couple times right and so jesus just tells him to rise take up your bed bro i've been laying on this ground 38 i can't even move i'm sick for 38 we mean just to get up yeah 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 but if people go by that go there on a regular why did like nobody never try to like help him in the pool that too. Bro, you know when people go to church and and they, they're waiting for somebody to come over and grab their hand and pray with them. And nobody sees them. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that makes sense. I mean you can look at it so many different ways. Did he even ask? You could even ask, yeah, that too. Did he ask or was he just possibly asked? Asking for money or something, you know, like anything. could have been doing money, or anything. Um, but one thing I'm realizing with this text and, and reading it again, um, I would concur that only one person got healed each time the angel stirred um, the water or troubled the water, because um, it says um, each time um, he says, "For I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is bubble, when the water is troubled." someone else always gets ahead of me. Um, so I would concur that I guess it's only one person every single year that gets healed, which is the first person that steps into the pool. Mm-hmm. So I look at it that, like that that way, but I also look at it for 38 years. Um, this man held on to hope because for some people, that's a long time of being helpless and powerless and I would have probably just, yo, that's it for me. It's, I wouldn't even probably make it 38 years. Year two, I'd be like, yo, I'm good. Things ain't getting better. It is what it is, you know what I mean? But I, I've never looked at it in this light that he still had some hope that 38 years, year after year, even though someone else got ahead of him, he was still there, still trying um, to get healed. Right, and he's just holding on to hope that entire time. Um, but I also look at it in the sense that he was just making excuses. You can't walk, you can't crawl, roll, do whatever you got to do to get into that pool. You know what I'm saying? Ask somebody to put you a little bit closer every single year. Ask somebody to move you up one feet. You know what I'm saying? So the next time, the next year it comes, all you got to do is just Roll if you can, whatever, but do anything you can to get into that pool. So stop making excuses about someone else always gets in front of you or someone else always gets ahead of you. Do whatever you got to do to get in that pool. This, this reminds me of sometimes, I'm, I'm going to use the youth as an example, where like I'm trying to do better, but it's hard. Like I can't, I keep going backwards. Like, every time I try to go forward, I keep going backwards. Like I got... Like I need help, yeah. but you're not you're not crying out for help, right? You're not asking nobody to help you, right? <clears throat> so, I, I love the response though, right? So after Jesus tells him to rise and take up his bed, we go straight to verse nine, and immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Uh, I'm trying to think how I want to approach that, Jay. You know what? 
we, the, the, the Bible tells it for us. The Bible does it for us. So I think there was, I want to believe that there, there was an ounce of faith that happened here. There, there was some type of faith because he was made whole and he took up his bed and walked versus yeah. he got up and was made whole. So the healing took place. And in the event, he was able to get up and walk. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, all right, did he... Like, did he feel better before he was able to get up? Or Jesus told him to get up, he was made whole, and, he, and then he had to believe that he was better. You know what I mean? But the, And then on the flip side of that, on the same day was the Sabbath. So it was like, we're getting ready to transition into something that you don't do because we know that on the Sabbath, there's no work. Right. right? And so Jesus is being strategic again. Just like how he was when he was speaking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. Like, why would Jews be talking to Samaritans? And here we go again. Why would Jesus be doing work during the Sabbath? So we go right into verse 10. Jay, you got something for that or are you good? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. So the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, that was cured, it is the Sabbath day. Is it not lawful for thee to carry thy bed? And so all they see is him carrying the bed. They don't realize that this dude was the same dude that was just laying on the ground. Yeah. They just see him doing work. Right. More concerned about their rules and culture, uh, their interpretation and regulations, religion. Religion. Right? Rather than the fact that this man's life was just entirely changed. It's time to celebrate. It's not time to put somebody down mm -hmm. and with their religious uh, stuff that they believe, their culture and stuff. It's not, it's not time. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 says, he answered them. He answered them. He that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. <laughs> then answered they him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed knew not where he went. Like he didn't know where he went, for Jesus had conveyed himself away uh, or moved himself away, a multitude being in that place. So it was a busy place. He had a lot of stuff going on. He had a lot of people waiting around this, this well, or this water, this location of water. And Jesus did what he did, and he left. So it's almost as if Jesus is, like, stirring something up, right? He, it looks like he's trying to do something else. We're going to keep reading to see what happens but you understand what's happening right um as yeah this man is healed Jesus told him to get up and then pick up his bed i don't know why he just didn't tell him to get up nobody would have known that he was healed but for whatever reason god told him to take not only just get up because you're made whole but get up you're made whole and then take up your bed i'm not sure where he was taking his bed to but him taking up his bed caused him to be noticed by the religious Jews. Maybe that was God's intent. And even as you, you're reading, bro, just, just thinking how amazing it is that God can just change your life in a split second, like turn your entire life around. And, and I think that's so important for your audience to hear as Mm -hmm. No matter what your condition is, no matter how long it's been, God is able to turn your entire situation around, entire life around. Um, this man uh, chose no longer to be bound by his condition, right? But he, he saw Jesus. He had an encounter with him, right? And as Gio said, it, he said to him, sir, and I, I don't mean to back all the way up, but he didn't even know at the time who he was speaking to. Right. But again, just, just want to encourage someone that will watch this, that no matter what you're going through, no matter how long it's been, um, God is more than able to, to change your entire uh, story. Right? That God is not done yet. The book is not done. It may have been a rough chapter, uh, but wait till God writes the next one and just trust God that things will turn around. 
I definitely think it's important that that your audience hears that. Right? Right. God is able. That huge. Approve that message. You approve that message? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So they asked him about this man that told him to t- take up his bed, and Jesus kind of disappeared in the crowd. Verse fourteen. Afterwards, Jesus find finds him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done those things on the Sabbath day. And so now the plot thickens. So we just got confirmation that this man didn't know that Jesus was Jesus. Right. He was like, uh, some man told me to take up my bed and he wanted to go point at this man and did it and the man was gone. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it was by chance that Jesus disappeared. It wasn't time for them to know what he looked like, right? But they knew of him because they were like, right, we gotta go find Jesus now. Now we gotta kill him because he's out here doing work on the Sabbath day. But notice what happens after you have, you have that divine encounter with Jesus. Once you're made whole, and and I, I, I want to say, so let's go back to your baptism example. Mm-hmm. It's like once you accept Christ into your life and you make that outward declaration that Jesus changed your life, right? You then, you're then... I guess a good word is obligated, right? Like you you sign the contract almost, right? You, you're obligated to then start to walk the walk, talk the talk, live the life, right? Worship God. And verse 14, I feel like, like Jesus is reading the fine print of the contract. He's like, yo, listen, I just made you feel better. I made you whole. I changed your life. I made you new. Please. Don't sin anymore. Lest the worst thing happen to you. And in his mind, I'm pretty sure in this guy's mind, he's like, what do you mean? Like, I've been sick for 38 years. Like, it's probably a zillion things that he can go out and do right now. Mm -hmm. Before, because he was sick. But he's been made whole. Now it's time to live his life like Jesus intended for him to live. All right? It says, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. So again, they still tight. Jesus out here doing work on the Sabbath day. So like, it wasn't that big of a deal to do work or work on the Sabbath day? Bro, that was like God made the Sabbath day holy. And I, and I think that these people, I think, I, got, I don't know where it was in the Bible. I can't remember off the top of my head, but Jesus says, I think he says, the man wasn't made for the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was made for man. Mm. And so I think that they took that day as though it was... I think they missed the interpretation of what God meant for that day. The Pharisees. Yeah, the Pharisees. Right. Yeah. The Pharisees. I think I think that they they misinterpreted what God. I I think He just wanted them to understand that, that as a as a as my creation, it's required that you need rest, right? And the physical, but when we see Jesus come down, it's it's, it's a little bit different. He puts a little twist on it. It's Rest in me, right? I want you to rest in me. You're gonna get your rest in me. It's a little bit different, and and when we get to that part, um, we'll we'll, we'll look at the content and we'll we'll be able to be able to break that down a little bit further. But bro, the Sabbath day was like a no no. You you don't. I who somebody told me it's like one of those Jewish hospitals. I think Manaman. How you say that word? Manamanese. Mamadi. A nominee, whatever it is. <laughs> my, I think my my Maimonides, I think that's how you say it. Uh-huh. That's like a, a predominantly Jewish hospital. 
they have a Sabbath elevator. Oh, wow. How is that? You don't press the Somebody button. Somebody presses the button to you. Don't press the button. Don't press the button. It stops at every floor. Oh. First of all, you're at work. At that point, what, what does it matter if you press the button or not? You clocked in, sis. What, what'd, you, <laughs> what'd you do? With? So that's neither here nor there. But that's but just to prove the point, I mean, drop the point as, mm-hmm. that's how serious they are about the Sabbath day. They're not even trying to do it. They're not trying to do any work. Now you're trying to push the elevator button. Yeah, the Sabbath day was serious for them, right? So verse 17 says, but Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto and I work. My father worked here, and so and so do I, right? So, so, so I, we're getting ready to change a little bit, right? Everything that happened at the water, we're going to switch, switch it up a little bit. We're going to change gears. Um, it's a, it's a new sto- beginning of a new story. Therefore, the Jews sought more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And then answered Jesus and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and shows him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. You get what he's saying? You know, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. That's fine. Okay. So pretty much um Jesus 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 is confronted by these Jews, these Jews. And 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 Jesus starts off by saying, like <laughs> I think this is a slap to the face, me personally anyway. Cause he just did something on the Sabbath day and now he's coming out the gate talking about he's level with God like he's the same as God he's equal with God so this is going to infuriate them even more right they don't believe that the Messiah has come they believe that he he's he's coming but he didn't make it here yet and you got this man talking about he's God he's equal with God they're super tight super oh no nah, now you're being disrespectful it's almost like a let let's just say he 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 they just like he's like really violating them right now, all right. And so Jesus is like, wait, hold on. Let me just reassure you. The son can do nothing of himself. Like, I don't think they know. I don't think they know that Jesus is the son of God yet. I don't think they're picking up what he's saying. But he's like, listen, they don't. They not. Yeah, he's saying, yo, I there's nothing I can do out of my own power. What what I see the Father do, those are the things that I do as well. Right. Verse 20 says, The Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that so that you will be you will marvel or you will be amazed. Verse 21 he says, For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them even so the son quickeneth whom he will. So as a father raise, can raise people from the dead and, and, and quicken their spirit, what's, what's the, what's the uh, or give them life, even so the son can give life to whom he will. But that's only because the father, the father does it, and so does the son. Therefore, the son has the power to do what the father gives him power to do. Right. And verse 22, for the father judges no man. but hath committed all judgment unto the son. So that's, that's, I didn't even realize that. So on judgment day, we won't be seeing God the father during judgment day. He won't be the one judging us. Who's going to judge us? Yeah, Jesus. All right. Verse 23 says that all men should honor the son, all men should honor Jesus, even as they honor God the father. It says he that honor does not honor the son does could, does also does not honor the father which hath sent the son. I reassure you, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on Jesus, that believes on the father who 
who sent Jesus has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Stop at 24. You picking up what he's putting down? Yeah. What What is he saying? Put it in your, your own words. My own words? Uh, what that saying is that you also got to believe in, in God and Jesus. It's like you can't just believe in one because they're basically they're basically one body. So if you just believe in half of them, it just makes no sense. So you have to believe in both and live like a, a peaceful life, a god a godly life in order to make it to heaven. That's 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 my interpretation of that. Okay. Jay, what's your take on it? Because I, I like I want to touch about what Ezra said. I like what he said. Because a lot of people um like they believe in like Mother Mary, the Virgin, um you know, they, they some people would even go on to say that there's um there's God the mother. I saw that one time. So I was like, What? And it and it just this is clearly saying believe in God the Father and God the Son. If you honor the Father, you honor the Son. If you honor the Son, you honor the Him that sent him, which is God the Father. And should you be decide to believe, like hear my words and believe on me. You will have everlasting life and you will not, you will pass from death into life. Yeah. Um, I agree with, with, with others saying, um, some people don't understand that we serve a triune God, right? God, the father, God, the son, and, uh, the Holy spirit. And so there's a scripture in the Bible that says, um, paraphrasing, you can't get to the father, but coming through me which is which is jesus right so um, you have to believe in jesus that's that's the beginning of the foundation of your faith right that that's who like asking to to come into your life and change you accepting jesus christ as your lord and personal savior um so it's believing in jesus but also the father that sent him right you can't have one and not the other essentially right um and yeah, that's 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 my take. I was just looking at twenty four, um, where he says uh, they will never be con condemned for their sins, but they have already passed on from death into life. And that reminds me of Second Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So right here, he's not necessarily talking about physical death or or physical birth, but that spiritual rebirth, right? Um, and so having that, walking in that newness, I think it's in John three seventeen. he said, I come not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so that's, that's exactly what Christ came to do, but you got to believe in the Father as well. He didn't even like address the fact that they wanted to kill him for working on the Sabbath day. Like he didn't even like cop a plea. He didn't even give him a story pertaining to doing work on the Sabbath day. Like, no, 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 chill, chill, chill. I was just trying to help him out. Like, oh, I just did this because he went way over that. You know? He don't got to explain himself. <laughs> but according to them, he does because they don't, they don't believe in him yet, right? And it, he, he, he's addressing the root of the problem. Like, I, I, don't, I not only need you to believe in the Father, but I also need you to believe that I am Jesus. Like, they're mad because Jesus is saying that he's equal to God the Father. Yeah. Yeah. And he's clearly telling them, yo, you, I am equal. Like, like I'm like I'm not, I can't do these things unless the Father allows me to do them. But understand that you have to believe on me, believe in me, and also the Father in order for you to get this everlasting life, in order for you to be spiritually rebirthed again. Like, that. Like, you, there's no way to get to the Father unless you come through me. Yeah, he's the access. It's the gate. We have the gateway. He is the gate. So, I mean, he goes into another resurrection, but Jesus talks a lot after that. Wow, I didn't realize that.
Do the end in prayer, then I'll close out. Okay. Father in heaven, we give you honor and we give you glory. And we thank you for sending your son into the world. Thank you, Lord. Not to condemn, Lord God, but that should we believe in him, Lord God, we will be quickened. We will be, we'll be able to pass over from death into life. Thank you for a second chance. Thank you for not blotting us out, Lord God, and just simply snapping your fingers and making us like dust again. But instead, Lord God, you poured out your love on all the earth. And for those who should receive it, Lord God, would be able to tap into this source of love, Lord God, which is you. So Father, hear us even now as we decree and declare that we believe in the one you sent, Father God. We believe in Jesus Christ. We accept him as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus, O oh Lord. For we are nothing without him, O oh Lord. We thank you for Jesus. I pray even now that you would continue to speak to us, Lord God, as we read the rest of this chapter, Lord God. I pray that you would keep us until we're able to read this chapter again, Father God. We thank you for all that you have shared and showed with us this time, Lord God. We thank you for reminding us that you are a way maker. You are a healer, Lord God, and that we can rely on you to do any and everything in an instant, oh Lord. Thank you for being an on-time God. I pray for blessings over my brothers today, Lord God. I pray that where they go to and from, that you would go before them, oh Lord, protecting them from things seen and unseen. May your blessings and your glory follow them. And, and even so, Lord God, may your light shine through them that when people see them today, Lord God, they would notice something different about them, that their faces would shine as though Moses did, Lord God. And they would want to know who it is that has made them this way, Lord God. And they would not hesitate, but they would declare, Lord God, with great joy that it was one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. So Father, have your way, Lord God. And as they go out, Again, I pray you be with them. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Guys, this is the end of the video. We'll be back next week with Ida Half uh, John chapter 5. We discussed a lot today. See how Jesus used his power to be able to change um, the man's life after just being sick for 38 years. And how the Jews were so stuck in their tradition and their way they didn't realize the um the power and what what Jesus did. But it happens. When you get stuck in your way, you can't really see the bigger picture. And but I just pray that you guys just keep on coming along on this journey with us. Have your Bible with you. If you don't, scriptures will be on the screen. And just see you guys next week. Please like, subscribe, peace.